Well, I gave up novel writing for 10 years because I set myself a 10-year plan that in 10 years, I would have enough money so I would never have to do anything I didn't want to do again. And at the end of 10 years, I had uh, accomplished that. During the 10-year period, I did five plays on Broadway. I did 20 movies, perhaps, about 60 plays for television. Doing a lot of essay writing, and uh, I was involved in politics. So toward the end of this period, I had the leisure. I was living up the Hudson River. So did you see much of Gore and Harry when they moved up to Edgewater? Oh, yes, yes. That was the hangout. It was wonderful. That relationship, Howard and Gore's, is it's sort of monumental in American literary history. Mm -hmm. And for that period, it must have been quite strange or difficult. Or, or maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Well, I think it was difficult, you know. And there were, there were big problems. And big problems with Gore's mother and, uh, you know, about Howard. And there were cruel things done. And... Um, I always felt, I said, it's, it's, it's wonderful to have, whether this is a romance or not a romance, I don't know, but it is wonderful to find the person in your life who fulfills that, what, that, that, that which you need. And for Howard and Gore, that is what happened. I remember at one point I did a summer stock play up there at the little theater there, and I stayed at Edgewater for the time that I was in rehearsal. I had an hilarious time. It was wonderful because every morning, Gore would go down to write. You know, that's what he does first thing in the morning. So no matter how late or how drunk he was the night before, he was always down in the wonderful octagonal room sitting in the window with his coffee. And I was always the next person down, and I would come in with my coffee, and then we would sit and talk and in the window, looking out at the water. It was a wonderful place to be. Joanne and I both campaigned for him when he ran for Congress in Dutchess County. And he, he didn't win then? No, but I think he got more votes than Roosevelt did. Do you think he would have made a good um, senator, president. He would have, well, he was running for Congress. Uh, yeah, he would have shaken things up. He's mm -hmm. not. Uh, um, uh, you know, um, Gord does not tremble or quake in, in the face of opposition. And of course, that's precisely what we what we needed now, worse than we needed it then. No, I had been a conventional if somewhat radical, uh, candidate for Congress in 1960. I was in favor of recognizing Red China, which was a very daring thing to do. I thought the people of the United States ought to be educated, something which was a very radical thought, which is an idea whose time has not yet come. And I doubled the vote in this upstate New York, very conservative district. And I got 20,000 more votes in the district than did Jack Kennedy, who was the head of the ticket. So he was riding on my coattails. But Jack certainly accepted the status quo that the American empire was uh, to be obeyed everywhere, particularly in, in our backyard. But given your dislike of the empire, did you try and dissuade him from forays into Southeast Asia? No, I didn't know a tenth of what I've picked up since. I didn't question the empire. None of us did. And that's why in the 60s, it used to get on my nerves. Oh, you knew Jack Kennedy and Harry Truman, and you went along with the wars, and you actually enlisted in the army in the Second War. And I kept saying, you weren't there, kids. You don't know what kind of a country it was. We thought we were doing our patriotic best. We didn't question uh, the interests of the United States, and we believed that the misinformation, disinformation, propaganda that was um, all about us. Do you think you would have made a good president or not, or a good senator? Yes. I don't know about president. Although he and I used to have this dream that he would run for president and he would get elected. And uh, then we would overthrow the government and 
<laughs> he would become the emperor, and I was going to become sort of the empress, <laughs> and then we could redo the White House. It was glorious, and he was going to rewrite the Constitution, which I think he still has a feeling about. Do you look back as sort of halcyon days on Edgewater? Yes, yes. It was halcyon days anyway, because we were all at the best and the brightest moment in our lives at that point. We got wonderful and glorious and did other wonderful things, but that was a special moment in time. And you can see part two of Gore Vidal's Gore Vidal at the same time next week. <laughs>